Hi, welcome to another episode of Talking with Docs. I'm Dr. Brad Weening. I'm Dr. Paul Zalzal. And on today's episode, we're going to be talking about hip replacement implants. Bring them out. Yeah, and there's a lot more options for the hip than for the knee. Yeah, some design issues that are different. Let's start with uh, the acetabular component or the socket. Okay, so if you're going to have a total hip replacement, you're going to get the socket replaced. And um, the most common way to do that is to put in a metal component into the acetabulum or the socket, okay? And uh, the most common thing is to not use cement, to implant it and let the bone grow in. So you can see on this particular one, there's a porous coating here that bone will grow into. Okay. It's rough. It's rough. And sometimes we put some screws in as well to help hold it until the bone grows in. All right. So that's the acetabular component. And then inside that acetabular component, we put in our bearing surface. And usually that bearing surface is high density polyethylene. So really hard plastic. And that just goes right inside it like that. It snaps in and that becomes your acetabular components. So I'd say yes, vast majority of time, plastic liner is the bearing surface of choice. There are two other choices, Paul. Right. One of them being ceramic. Here's an example of a ceramic bearing surface that would go into the metal shell. What's the advantage of ceramic? So traditionally, the benefits of ceramic were that its wear properties were superior. So we thought that it was going to last longer than plastics. But I would say the biggest difference for me when I think about plastic versus ceramic is that not that ceramics have got worse, just the plastics have gotten a lot better. So with each generation of plastics, they've become harder and harder and their wear properties have become closer to what ceramics were. Right. And, and, the, and one of the disadvantages of ceramic was you can imagine if I took this ceramic component and I dropped it off the second floor window and onto concrete, what do you think would, might happen to it? It might crack. It's not like a, not like a ceramic pot, so it's, it's a lot harder than you would think using the word ceramic, but yes, so the risk of fracture or chipping, yeah, absolutely. It, it can fracture. You could drop a piece of plastic out of the second floor window and it's not going to crack when you drop it because the plastic is a lot tougher. That sounds weird but it is tougher because it, ha it resists crack propagation much better than a ceramic. If you got a tiny little crack in ceramic, you could have ca catastrophic failure. The thing could just shatter. Yeah, explode. If you get a little crack in the plastic, it's not going to go anywhere. No, it's going to wear slowly, but it's, yeah, it's not going to yeah. fracture for sure. So better wear characteristics, not a better uh, resistance to fracture. So those are the two choices. What's the third choice? Well, you've, you've heard a lot about it in the media. You could have a metal bearing surface. Sometimes we used to use metal bearing surfaces, but they have some problems with them. Yep. Uh, when you have a metal on metal bearing surface, and you're going to have to watch our metal on metal video. Yes. M O M. Yes, it talks about the ions that sometimes can be released related to the wear of a metal ball on a metal socket. Okay. So that's becoming less common. But check out that video. Okay, okay, so once you're done the socket, your femur is like a, the end of your femur, your thigh bone is like a ball. And that's what makes up your ball and socket joint. So we cut off the ball with a saw and then we replace it with a smaller ball that sits on top of a stem. So this is a femoral implant. Just ignore the ball for a second. Um, and this goes inside of your hollow thigh bone. So we put a, a drill, a series of drills and broaches inside your thigh bone to remove some of the marrow and the residual bone. And then this sits in and fills the remainder of the hollow portion of your thigh bone. Um, it's shaped very specifically, not only to stop it from going further distally towards your knee, but also rotating. Um, a lot of people ask, is this made out of titanium? And the answer is? Often that is made out of titanium. Yes. And the reason that we want it to be made out of titanium is because it's inside of your bone, we want its ability to bend or its modulus of elasticity to be, to be similar to bone. If it's too soft, then the stress that's above and below could cause the bone to break, or sorry, cause it to break. If it's too hard, then it could cause the bone to break. So we want it to be similar to bone. Yeah. So the design of it is such that it can, the stiffness tries to get closer to bone, but it still is much stiffer than bone. Now here we have, a, we have a metal ball or a cobalt chrome ball. We've talked about in other videos how we don't want titanium to be the bearing surface itself. Is this the only option for balls, Paul? No, that's not the only option for balls. You can have a ceramic femoral head and that will articulate with a ceramic cup or a plastic cup. So you could have a, are all the femoral heads the same size? No. Sometimes we use uh, larger femoral heads, smaller femoral heads, depending on the anatomy. 
the advantage of a larger femoral head is it's harder to dislocate. You can imagine for a femoral head to dislocate, it has to travel half the diameter or the radius, right? And if it travels half the diameter or the radius, then it can jump out. So if you have a larger femoral head, it has to travel farther before it jumps out. So, so it's about stability. More, le yeah, more stable, less chance of dislocation with a larger femoral head. Does the femoral head size affect the wear properties at all? The femoral head does affect the wear properties, and there are. We used to find like an ideal size, and it used to be around 28 millimeters. Yeah, was an ideal size for the polyethylene that we had back in that time, like 10, 15 years ago. But now the polyethylenes are much better, so we can have larger femoral heads and we don't have to worry so much about increased wear with the larger femoral head. Yeah, and I would say that, like we talked about before, that's probably the biggest change as far as increasing stability. Dislocating total hips was very common, like 20 years ago when I was yeah. in medical school and a resident, it used to happen all the time, and now thankfully it's, it's pretty uncommon. Not, yeah. not unheard of, but it's becoming more uncommon. Don't jinx us. Yeah, I mean. I think you just jinxed our next case. I am not worried about that. Okay. So these, that, those are the implants that we use for a hip replacement, okay? Acetabular component, femoral component, bearing surface. They do wear, and we thought we'd just show an example. Here's an example of a hip that had a metal socket in it, the, the, had a plastic socket in it. The plastic wore out, and you can see eventually the femoral head wore right through the metal, okay? And so the reason that that happens is because the, the femoral head is harder than the socket. Something has to give. Yeah. And usually it's going to be the socket. Yeah, the cobalt chrome wore through the titanium, and that wore right through. So we obviously revised this one, took out the, the old uh, acetabular component, and put in the new acetabular component. And the failure there is probably more related to the plastic not being hard enough rather than the metal. It, the yeah. metal is just not designed to take that kind of force. Yeah. Nowadays, just like dislocation is much less common, wear of these components is much less common. Ten years ago, we used to revise a lot of hips. Yeah. M much less so now because the implants are lasting much longer than before. So there you go. In a nutshell, you get to see all the different kinds of hip replacements. Like we talked about in other videos, ultimately have a discussion with your surgeon. Your surgeon will tell you what he thinks is best for you and you want your surgeon to be using an implant that they're comfortable with, not only the surgical technique, but also confident in the product as well. Yeah, I mean, it's okay to ask questions, but I wouldn't, you know, try and get your surgeon to use an implant that he's not or she's not familiar with yeah because really the difference from one company to another is very very minimal uh, all the companies have excellent uh, implants out there nowadays certainly you know there are some risks with the, with the newest thing that's out because it hasn't been tested as long but if you if you find your surgeon's using an implant that he's or he or she's been using for about you know 10 years five years and he's had he or she's had good outcomes with it yeah then that's something you want to stick with Absolutely. So if you like this video, please like it, subscribe to our channel, leave us a comment, let Remember, us know about your implants. You are in charge of your own health. We'll see you next time. Hey, 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 before you swipe away, thank you so much for watching our videos. Yeah, for sure. We know they can drag on, get a little bit long and boring sometimes, but it's all information that we're trying to pass along. And so if you want to watch other other videos, swipe it up here. Where? Up here. Okay. Let me do it for you. And remember to subscribe down below. Let me do that for you.